Good Monday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and thank you for allowing me to come into your little life today, little world, through the Word of God as we go through the thought for the day. And today, the thought for the day goes through Numbers chapter 36. We conclude the book of Numbers, and it's a short chapter of 13 verses, but some five times just in this short little chapter we read of the commands of God. Verse 2, verse 5, verse 6, verse 10, verse 13, you read, God commanded, God commands. And I wanted to speak a little bit about the commands of God, God's word. We are told in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, that we are to meditate on the word of God day and night. We're not to let it depart from our lips, from our hearts. God's word, we read in Psalm 119, verse 105, is a lamp and a light to our feet and for our path. God's word is the shield, the sword of the spirit, which we use um, to fight off temptations and trials and times when we're going through difficult situations in life. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave us that example in the wilderness when he was tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11, and Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 13, and each time when he was tempted by Satan, he quoted the Bible. Yesterday, I learned the lesson um, about how to share God's word. We're told in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Christ himself, our Lord and Savior, is part of the great commission he gave for all of us in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, told us to go out and make disciples of all nations. All authority had been given to him, baptizing people, teaching people to obey the commands that he had given us in his word. And obviously all of scripture is the word of Christ because as Christ would tell us in John chapter five, verse 39, search the scriptures for they testify of me. All of scripture is the word of Jesus Christ and the testimony of Christ, our Lord and savior. But as I was saying yesterday, I learned a valuable lesson about sharing God's word. Um, a lady, came to my church yesterday to visit. She is from uh, Germany. Um, about two and a half years ago, she was dis displaced from her nation because of the war with Russia, the invasion of Russia to Ukraine. Millions of Ukrainians uh, fled their country into Europe and here in America. And Germany, one of the nations, is being flooded by these immigrants from Ukraine. So she has been... Um, spending more time here in America the last couple of years. Her and her daughter came here from Germany. Her daughter was 26 years old. Last year, her daughter, she went on to tell me, was at a club um, drinking and a gentleman came and started to talk to her and apparently put uh, some fentanyl in her drink. And this girl had a heart attack and died at the age of 26. So this woman has been through a lot, to say the least, between being displaced from her own country and then having her daughter be tragically killed. And not only tragically killed like this, the gentleman who did it, um, from what I was told, has had no charges pressed against him. Then on top of that, she went on to tell me that the gentleman that did this was a black man. And I was tempted to try to tell her that it doesn't matter the color. It could have been a white guy that did it. It could have been a Spanish guy that did it. It doesn't matter. But I learned what the Bible tells us. And again, we are to follow the commands of God in our lives. In James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20, the scriptures tell us to be slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. When people are grieving, like Job, when Job was grieving, his three friends had a lot of things to say to Job, and all they did was cause more chaos and trouble for Job. Oftentimes when people are grieving, like this woman yesterday, it is better to stay quiet. Don't put in your input. Don't quote scripture. Just listen. And as this woman went on for about a half an hour talking to me, and she, see, she saw that I, I, she gained my trust and that I truly cared by listening. I asked her, would you like a Bible track, a little booklet on being born again and salvation in Christ? And she said, yes. And I gave her the track, the little booklet. 
And I noticed as time was going on, she was reading it more and more and she was looking through it. The moral of the story is, is that if I had, and as a young Christian, I would have been tempted to, to give my input like Job's friends and try to come down on her and, you know, tell her not to be angry, not to be bitter. That would have scared her away. I encourage you, my friends, yes, we should be ready to share the word of God. We love God's word. As Christians, we do. But our flesh, you often hear me say this, is weak. We have a lot of pride in us. We have a lot of stuff in ourselves too, right? We got grief, anger, bitterness in our own hearts. We need to be very careful when somebody is suffering that we do not ignite the fire. Let your words be few. Let them see Christ in you. Oftentimes we can share the God's word. It's not so much by what we say, but by how we live our lives. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 tells us, Carry the burdens of other souls to fulfill the law of Christ. You want to fulfill Christ's law and his word? Carry the burdens of others. We know the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Two religious people saw a man beaten up. They could have been church members. They could be people that knew the Bible. They could quote the scriptures, baptize, brought up in the church. But they did nothing to help this person. A Samaritan, one who was despised. An outsider, downcast person in society got off his horse, so to speak. And sometimes we need to get off our horses and help others. This person showed what it meant to be a true Christian. My friends, today, I hope today's devotional video will remind us that we live in a world of pain and hurt and suffering. In Isaiah chapter 57, verses 17 to 19 in the Old Testament, we're told that sometimes, oftentimes, God will punish, discipline, correct his children um, because they're rebellious. But in the long run, we read, God will heal them. He will have compassion. We do not know what God is going to do in other people's lives. God's ways are higher than our ways. As we read in Isaiah chapter 55, verses 8 and 9. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, tells us the secret things belong to the Lord. God is God, we are not. Let us be careful. Yes, we should love the commands of God's word, but we need to really get to know God's word. As Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16 tells us, Jeremiah ate God's word. He took it in, he digested it. He just didn't taste it. See, there are people that taste the word of God. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4 to 6 tells us that. Some people use those verses of the Bible to say you could lose your salvation. No, they never knew the Lord. As Christ would say in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, I never knew you. People were saying, Lord, Lord, no. They just tasted the word of God. They didn't digest it. It's like your physical food. If you do not digest your food, it's no good to you. You could eat the most healthiest of foods, but if you just chew it and then spit it out, it's not going to do you any good. And it's the same thing with God's word. Let God's word truly get into you. I hope today, my friends, the word of God will equip you. If you're brought into a situation like I was yesterday, when somebody is in a deep state of grief and hurt and trauma in their lives, that we be very careful what we say and when we say it. Remember, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. Oftentimes when we speak and we talk with people and have to let our feelings be known, have our emotions get the better of us, and we live in a culture today of emotions and feelings, not logic and good judgment. That is why there's so much trouble in our society today. One of the reasons, anyway, because of pride, because I have to have the last word, I got to let people, I got to vent. No, you don't have to do these things. When Christ walked this earth, oftentimes he was depicted as a sheep, as a lamb sent to the slaughter. When he was reviled and when he was treated harshly, he didn't open his mouth. He just trusted his father. Let us follow his example and not our own hearts today. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who see this devotional video today, Lord. I pray that we would have a hunger and a thirst for your word, not just intellectually, I've been guilty of that often in my own life, being able to quote scriptures and remember verses, but let it truly saturate and get deep down into our hearts and souls this day. In Christ's name I pray. God bless you all.